MRCEM OSCE course. Preparatory for the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. UK OSCE exam. Website www.mrcemoscecourse.com. Facebook page MRCEM OSCE course. Hello, I am Muhammad Abdul Ghani Sadiq, co founder and instructor of MRKM OSCE course. I would like to speak today about lower limb central nervous system examination, which is frequently a bearing station in the MRKM OSCE exam. You will start by uh, washing your hands and introducing yourself to the patient, confirming his identity and age and asking him open question regarding his problem and confirm that he is pain free so you can give him painkiller if he feels pain and ask for chaperon and ask him for exposure but keep his dignity uh, in the sake of examination then uh, our sequence or systemic approach for this examination will be an inspection then assessment of tone, power, reflexes, coordination, and sensation. Be prepared to do all these tests within seven minutes, including the management plan. It's a straightforward station. The scenario from outside usually will be clear that the patient uh, might present with pain or weakness in his leg and you you might be faced by a patient having uh, common or deep uh, bronchial nerve palsy sometimes patient might have uh, diabetic peripheral uh, bone neuropathy but other scenarios also uh, might be expected so start by ask, asking the patient after exposure of course to stand up for you and uh, preferably by bare, ha bare feet ask him to bring his feet uh, towards each other and just uh, stay standing and check the stance of the patient if the patient uh, is swinging or he would uh, he would like to uh, or he is going to fall while opening his eyes, this is likely cerebellar ataxia. Then ask him after that uh, to close his eyes while standing. And if the patient is near to, uh, is falling, not is swinging, swinging is considered negative, but if the patient is falling and be prepared to hold him uh, and don't let him to fall down, then this is considered positive Romberg test and this is indicates uh, sensory ataxia now ask the patient uh, do the examination for inspection from this point uh, while the patient is standing because it's a great chance to assess from the front and sides and the back of the lower limbs so assess for any scars uh, for any muscle wasting, for any uh, uh, laceration or any obvious abnormality and then you can uh, ask the patient to walk for you, assess the gait and the gait usually will be normal and then also assess the tandem gait, this is the ask him to walk uh, the heel to toe but sometimes you might the patient might simulate abnormal gaits for you for example the hemiplegic uh, circumdux, circumduction gait or shuffling gait of Parkinsonians or waddling gait of proximal neuropathy by now ask the patient to lie down over the couch for you and now we will start by assessing the tone so the tone here in the lower limbs examined by two techniques the first technique is by 
rolling you will put one hand below the knee and the other one above the knee and uh, just roll the lower limb and assess for normal tone hypotonia or hypertonia and then do this at the other limb at, uh, immediately so as we stated in the upper limb examination the lower limb examination also please everything here every point of examination will be of comparison between the right and left uh, lower limbs uh, so please don't do two tests at the same time in uh, unilateral part and don't do the tests at simultaneously at the same time for both lower limbs you need to do it one by one then the other technique for the tone is by lifting and this is for the knee uh, just uh, keep your face towards the patient uh, feet and hold try to make lifting for the uh, be, from beh uh, below the knee joints one by one quick movement now we completed the tone we will go to assess the bar we will start by the hip joint flexors against resistance one by one by pushing over uh, from the anterior of the thigh and now extension by pulling from the back of the thigh while the patient is trying to extend his uh, hip then abduction of the hip joints and then adduction of the hip joints then power check the power of the uh, um, knee flexors and knee extensors and then by the ankle dorsi flexors and uh, blunter flexors and then by the big toe dorsi flexors or extensors sorry big toe extensors and this against resistance this is supplied by the deep pronea nerve then uh, proceed to examine reflexes and reflex examination here for the knee knee reflex L3 L4 and then ankle uh, reflex uh, S1 S2 and some schools state that this is S1 then assess for the uh, ankle jerk ankle colonus sorry assess for ankle colonus and this is by doing uh, inform the patient that you would like to do some movement over his uh, foot and ankle and just uh, by your hand hold the foot and do uh, dorsi flexion and keep in this position if there is repetitive movement plantar and dorsi flexion of the ankle this is considered uh, positive test for colonus also assess for blunt response uh, by scratching after informing the patient over the lateral aspect of the sole up to the little toe and the normal response is uh, flexion of the toes but if there is uh, extension of the big toe and fanning of the other toes this is uh, considered positive Babinski sign so take care you cannot say Babinski test it's a blunt response but once it's positive then we call it Babinski sign which is sign of upper motor neuron lesion now we will proceed to examine uh, coordination and here we have one test which is the heel uh, knee shin test ask the patient to bring one of the heels uh, put it over the contralateral knee and then move it down over the shin and then elevate and repeat again and then do the test heel knee shin test repeat it in the other side as well now move to the last part which is sensation and touch for uh, the fine touch uh, or examine the fine touch 
by bringing uh, cotton wool and then uh, inform the patient that you would like to uh, touch his uh, breastbone which is the sternum by the cotton wool and show him the feeling and then ask him to close his eyes and whatever you touch him say yes then start by examining over L2 which is uh, at the area of the anterior thigh and compare by the other side then L3 over the knee then L4 over the medial aspect of the leg then L5 over the lateral aspect of the leg which extend up to the ferris web space between the uh, big toe and the second toe and S1 over the sole then S2 which is at the other side over the back of the thigh against L2 so L2 anterior thigh S2 posterior thigh and then uh, instead that also you would like to assess uh, uh, the perianal sensation L S3, 4 and 5 and then state the intention to assess the bend sensation by neurobin don't forget this because this is one point one mark in the exam just intention and then uh, go and assess the joint position and vibration sense joint position hold the big toe from the lateral aspects of the uh, interphalangeal joint and also hold the tip of the uh, big toe from the lateral aspects by the other hand fingers and show the patient that this is up and this is down and then ask him to close his eyes and whenever you move this interphalangeal joint up or down ask him to tell you is it up or down then compare to the other side and then bring the uh, tuning fork 512 preferably and show the patient how it buzzing by activating it and show him how it stops when you hold it and then tell him that you would like to put it over his uh, feet and ask him to tell you when it's buzzing and it stops then do do the test over distal bony prominence uh, preferably you can do it over the interphalangeal joint or metatarsophalangeal joint of the big toe bilaterally then thank the patient tell him you completed his examination offer to dress him and make sure that he is comfortable and then uh, state that you would like to complete your examination by examining the cranial nerves and the upper limb uh, central nervous system neurological examination and at this point uh, inform the patient or the examiner might uh, come and ask you about your diagnosis then accordingly uh, according to your findings you can inform him that the patient for example might have um, common brain nerve uh, injury or um, sometimes uh, neuropraxia caused by compression of the combrian nerve at the level of the head of the uh, fibula by cast for example sometimes diabetic neuropathy uh, or as we stated earlier accordingly to the presentation be gentle with the patient please and uh, be prepared it's uh, straightforward and easy station thank you very much and see you in another station.